Today's video is all about identifying pinch points on online mapping services to help you guys with your scouting and your deer hunting. Now, as far as whitetail hunting is concerned, I usually like to lump pinch points or funnels, whatever you want to call them, into kind of four major categories, and there's going to be some overlap, but those categories are terrain funnels, vegetation funnels, water funnels, or man-made funnels. And so we'll go over examples of each of those. So I'll just dive right into Onyx here. And even though there's all these great layers that I use all the time for my e-scouting, I'm going to turn things like private and public land boundaries, uh, game management units, all that kind of stuff off, just because for the purposes of this video, they're not really going to be needed. So the first thing we're going to talk about is terrain funnels. Could be hill country, but you're also going to see them in plains type of habitat, as well as marsh country. So let's start with marshes, then go into kind of what you might see on western type habitat, and then dial it back down into hill country where you're going to find a whole bunch of different kind of pinch points. So most of what I oftentimes look for in marsh or swamp type habitat is where food might be, where bedding might be. But it's also helpful to know where some of those pinch points or funnels might be. And the most common one that I'll look at for this type of terrain is going to be some type of high ground bridge. There's a lot of low ground, there's a lot of wet stuff, and if you can find basically where a large high ground area tapers down into a very narrow strip of land and then open back, opens back up again, that little narrow strip oftentimes will contain that deer movement. So what I have shown right here is you have high ground on the upper right, you have high ground here on the lower left, and if you look in the middle here, you can see that in between those two you got a little bit of uh, brush, and just overall a little bit different color that's indicating to me that's probably higher ground than either what's to the southeast or the northwest of it. And you can just see those deer trails just real thick and heavy on the aerial map between those two pieces of land. So while I might expect bedding to be in different locations, of course there could be beds out there too, what I would look at that particular area is if I'm hunting say during the rut and I think bucks might be cruising from one island to another, that would be a spot that I would definitely look at. Here's another really good example of something I found this spring. So you can see my waypoints on here. So you can see to the west here, we got some open water. We've got wet marshy type terrain. And then also to the east here, we have again, wet marshy terrain. This strip of trees right here is mostly tamarack. So a swampy tree, it's a little bit more wet still right there. But where you see that I've walked from one side to the other, it's all high ground, it's just grass essentially, very dry. And along that route, there are trails that are just beaten down into the dirt. And to the north here, we've got basically a higher area of land that has a lot of oak trees on it. And to the south here, it's more of the same. We've got a couple scrapes that I found over here. Um, purple is always where I mark other tree stands that I find, but you got big woods you know, down to the south. So connecting this big wood lot down here with this one further to the north, you have this thin little strip of land, and that's like where I have that tree stand marked right there. Oftentimes, what you can see happen here too is those beaten down end of the dirt trails might have a lot of doe traffic, but they will see some buck traffic too. But occasionally you might have a deer that just kind of skirts on say like the downward side of one of those bridges where he's just walking through the thick, walking through those tamaracks or something like that. So it's good to kind of look at areas like that that might have a high ground bridge, but then see within that little pinch point, within that funnel, where is there some type of maybe bigger buck sign or where is there a place that has a little bit more cover where deers are going to feel more secure crossing that little high ground bridge. Right here we have another marshy area and you can tell you got high ground to the west, high ground to the east, and just a very narrow strip of land that connects those two. Now in some of those more western plain states, what you might find is you might have a lot of just kind of open area, maybe some rolling hills, plains, grasses, crop fields, what have you. But you might find that there's drainage systems that kind of run throughout there. And oftentimes those drainages will be kind of cut into the land. So you might be looking across the landscape and just see tree tops, but you actually walk into it and it, the terrain drops down into some of those areas. That's providing visual cover because the deer are out of sight from anything up above. Uh, but also you have the, the vegetation that's in those that are out, is offering some security as well. And while those will in and of themselves corral that deer movement oftentimes along those little corridors, 
if you find areas where say three different ones meet, then that is basically corralling deer movement from multiple different directions and acting as kind of a hub. And that hub is going to definitely be sort of a, a pinch point type area that you can focus in on. So in this one that I'm showing on the screen right here, you can see that we have this east to west drainage. We have this one kind of running uh, southwest to northeast. We have another one right here going north and south. And if I zoom in here, you can see some of these areas that act as basically these little hubs where you have multiple different drainages ending up in the same spot. Here's another one right here where you got multiple different little drainages cut into the hillside that all end up in this one little area. And here would be a, just another example. This one is even more dramatic than the last example where you basically have this little creek drainage running through the landscape and it basically just makes a three-way connection here. Uh, so if you're basically in that little hub right there, that would be a spot to definitely look at and focus in on to say, hey, this has got a really good chance of corralling that deer movement through that one particular spot. So now we'll move into the hill country type terrain. And this one, sometimes if it's really wooded, it's almost easier to just skip back over to the bare topo as opposed to the, the hybrid or the satellite view to really just be able to look at those topo lines. And there's a couple different major types of pinch points that you can see in this hilly type terrain. The first one is simply just the top end of a ravine. And I'll focus in on this one right here, which is really steep. Sometimes these really steep drainages like that, the deer won't actually cross through them. They'll basically take the path of least resistance around the top if they're traveling from one side to the other. And you can see where this little tree stand waypoint is here, right at the top end of that uh, steep cut. I actually did shoot a deer in this particular location and it basically was a deer coming up this draw right here. He got right up on the top end and he was traveling around this direction and he only, only got that far. Things that can make those funnels better or worse would just be how extreme they are. If it's just kind of a, a real narrow, shallow little ravine, it's going to be less likely to force the deer around a particular point. Whereas if that ravine is really steep, maybe it's got some vertical cutouts in it, or if it's full of deadfall and a bunch of debris, then that makes it more and more likely that those deer are gonna to wanna to cross at the point of easiest travel. And if you go and scout those areas on foot, it'll be really obvious where the deer are crossing around that first location they can. Another type of funnel in hill country that a lot of people have probably heard of before is called a saddle. And I'm just gonna show an example of a saddle here out in the Rocky Mountains because they're more dramatic. We got a peak on one side, we got a peak on the other side, and in between those two, you basically just look for the area of lowest elevation, which in this particular case is right here. And you can tell how it would be very appealing for an animal that is crossing from either one hillside or even straight below, or from this hillside down here, to wanna to wait until they get into this particular area before they go and cross through, as opposed to going right up over the top and covering more elevation gain. And just like in the last case, the more extreme those saddles are, the more likely they're gonna be used. But you can even use those principles in areas that don't have quite as extreme of an elevation change and still look for those types of areas on a micro level to be areas that can control deer movement. And you can tell in this example right here, there's a small saddle right in the middle here between where this ridge system is a little bit higher elevation and where you get higher elevation here to the southwest. If you zoom in here, you can see that at least on this side, there's only really one elevation line above where that saddle is. So it might only be, you know, 20 feet in elevation higher, but just by looking at the top of the map here, you can tell that there definitely still is a saddle there that's gonna uh, be a potential good place to look, especially if you're on a rut hunt, to be able to uh, get some of that movement. You do have to be pretty careful oftentimes playing the wind when you're hunting saddles and just about every one of these things that we're going over, you, you have to look at things like the wind and access in order to hunt them effectively. But this at least shows you how to find those particular areas on a topo map. One other type of pinch point in hill country is something that I've often heard referred to as a thermal hub. And it's essentially just an area where you have a lot of points and a lot of drainage systems all kind of coming down and congregating into one particular area. They can be really tricky to hunt because of the wind, but they can also be areas where number one, a deer can just stand in, in a time with falling thermals and be able to smell everything that's up on that higher elevation. And also 
they can act as just kind of a, a funnel between deer traveling from one ridge system to another. They'll drop down, go up to a different ridge, and if you just connect all those different lines, you get a congregation down in these bottom areas. Here's another example of one of those thermal hub type areas. And, and sometimes they can be a little bit bigger in just general area to where you'd want to go in on foot and just verify where some of those trails are crossing, where the scrapes are. There's usually scrapes in these types of areas. So it can be good to just kind of verify them on foot, but they're pretty easy to actually go on an aerial map or a topo map in this case, and just figure out where they are. Now we'll just slide over here a little bit and show basically what is the opposite of one of those thermal hubs. And you could think of this as like a convergence hub or ridge top hub. It's basically the area of highest elevation that's connecting the ridge systems. So if we look at this particular area, we got a ridge up here going to the north, one to the northeast, one to kind of the east southeast, one to the south, and then another system going over here to the west. And if any of these deer are traveling from one of these ridge systems to another, they're going to be going through this type of an area. And even within this too, you can see that this spot right here is the top end of one of those ravines, top ends of one of those drainages. So in combining this ridge top hub with one of the things we talked about earlier, if I was looking at this place and I wanted to figure out exact pinch point locations, the places I would look would be right here, right here, and basically every one of these, these tops here. Uh, it's possible the deer could go right across the top of this hub, but my experience, a lot of times you'll see trails on the upper ends of these drainages as they're going from one location to another. But this whole area has a lot of those type of pinch points congregated in one little area. And it can be a little bit easier to hunt these types of areas with the winds because you might get less of a swirling effect than you would down in the bottoms. Now, in areas that are really steep, and this is sometimes referred to as bluff country, you'll find areas that don't just have these ridge systems, you'll find areas that actually have vertical cliffs, they're bluffed out, there's rock faces that are impossible for deer to traverse from one elevation to another. But what you'll oftentimes find in areas like this is you'll find that those bluffs aren't just consistent around the entire length of a ridge system. There's gonna be gaps in those bluffs. And a lot of times when you find those gaps, you'll also find very heavily worn down trails where deer will take from one elevation to another. So just an example right here, you can see how shaded this one little elevation zone is on this particular topo map. And in some of those really shaded areas, you do have vertical cliffs, you have those bluffs. But, and this would be really tough to tell just by looking at the map, there was a gap here that we were able to crawl in between and get up to this higher elevation. And so right where this was located, there were trails that were basically beaten down into the dirt. And there also just happened to be a bed up on the top of that. But these areas in general can be really good pinch points, especially when they're located in relation to some of those other things we talked about earlier, like the top ends of ridges, like saddles, and some of the, the different field and vegetation type funnels we'll talk about in a little bit. When I'm in steep bluff country, a lot of times I like to also reference mapping technologies like LIDAR or 3D EP shading maps that can give you a really extreme level of detail. And oftentimes that can be a big help. But even in some of these cases, when you go out and actually verify on foot, you'll be able to find some of these actual pinch points and these trails that go through and cut through the bluffs in areas that you really just even can't quite see in that very high level of detail. So I'll look at the maps like this to give me a good general idea of what's going on and give me some areas that I want to focus in on further but then it's always a good idea to go on foot and confirm and verify where those actually are. Next, we'll talk about vegetation funnels. Deer are creatures of edge. They like moving along edge. They like hanging out in security cover. And oftentimes you'll find along those edges, just based on how they're set up, you'll find very natural pinch points. And we'll start with a very easy example here where we have essentially just a field edge. And you can look at the edge of that field and see how it's shaped. And you'll find that the inside corner of these woods, and then also what creates basically the outside corner of the field edges, can be good pinch points because 
you'll have a deer that might be traveling from one location down here. And if he wants to stay out of sight from the actual field, but still take the shortest line, he might take a path that cuts the corners very close. And you can see how in this particular example as well, there is a ravine coming up to this corner in the field. So right in this area right here would be a place that I would naturally gravitate toward to try and figure out if that's going to be a nice pinch point for say a rut setup. Here's another good example where you have a crop field edge. And in this case, it's even better than the last example in my opinion, because you have a very thin strip of trees between where you have that open crop field, assuming the crops are out or it's a, a smaller crop like a soybean or something like that, as opposed to corn, which offers more cover. But you have a very thin strip of trees here between that opening and where that hillside just drops off incredibly steep. So you have the outside corner of the field edge, the inside corner of the woods that's acting as a funnel. And then you got that addition of just that very small amount of area where the deer are actually going to be able to travel up on that flat could make a very good pinch point. When you have a longer, narrow area of field that can create something that's more like a double inside corner where you have two inside corners that are very close to one another. So if a deer wants to basically wrap around this field or get from one side to the other, they could just go straight across. But if they want to stay within that cover of the woods, they would have to basically just wrap around the edge of that field. So you got a double inside corner there. And here's an example for more of a big woods type area where you just have more of a rolling type of habitat and terrain. It's not quite as hilly, but you have a lot of clear cuts, a lot of logging that goes on. And you can tell in the middle of this map here, there's an area that was clear cut, but it wasn't done in a very regular shape. It, it kind of has some ins and outs, little points and depressions and things like that. And so what you can look at in an area like this is you can almost treat it as if it were the same type of thing as a field edge, where you basically just have a transition between different types of cover, one that offers more security, one that's more open. And I'm looking for areas where that transition line dips in and out nice and sharply. I'm looking for corners again, just like with the field edges. So I'm looking right here. I see a corner. I see a corner right here. Uh, that one I verify has good trails going around it as well as just going in and out of it. We scroll down here. Sometimes you can find beds on some of those points too, but if a deer is basically just traveling, say on the east side of this clear cut and scent checking, then as they get down an area like this, that little point right there is going to be a natural little area to look at to be able to funnel down that deer movement. This one also offers the outside bend of a little river here, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but that's also another good indicator that this could be a great funnel location. And then we got another corner down here and these ones aren't going to be as dramatic as some of what you might see in that more hilly country, because in that real steep hilly country, you'll get natural terrain features that prevent the deer from going through certain paths. Whereas in this case, there's nothing that's like a, a very hard obstacle that the deer can't cross. They can pretty much go wherever they want to go, but there's going to be some features that will push them into certain areas more than others. Here's another example, big woods again, where you had an area that was clear cut. And in this particular area, it's not really grown up. It's not super thick yet. So you would look at basically the inside corner of the woods, outside corner of that clear cut area as the pinch point. Next, we'll look at water funnels. And these can be just really great in certain areas because just like with the hilly terrain, there's certain water features that are really going to choke down deer movement and want to prevent deer from traveling across the water. I've shown this one in previous videos, but it basically shows the outside bend of a river where if a deer wants to get from this area up here, down to this area down here, any path that they're going to want to take, if they want to basically wrap around that river, it's going to choke them down into this small area right here. And you can see in this particular example as well, there is a little bit of a vegetation edge here as well. So that makes that particular funnel even more appealing. If I scroll up a little bit here, you can see another outside bend of a river. And this one also just has a very short gap to go across to where you have another body of water that's going to pinch down deer movement. So this little space right here is going to do a fantastic job at really corralling that deer movement between those two bodies of water. And here's just another example of an outside of a river bend that also combines the fact that it's a narrow strip of timber between the river edge and more open country. And you can see how that is going to choke down deer movement quite a bit. 
traveling from this area up here to the north down to this area here further to the south. This would be another area too where you could come in from a water access, just pop up right on the edge of that river system and leave almost zero cent from your access. Now creek and river crossings can be a little bit harder to identify. You have to number one know that it could be shallow enough for deer to want to cross at certain times of the year, which sometimes you can tell from the aerial photo, sometimes you, it's harder to tell. And if a creek is totally wooded, then it can be really tough to locate just based on the map where those actual locations might be that the deer want to cross. So for creeks that run through woods, it's oftentimes easiest just to walk the edge and look for where the trails cut over and mark them. But for areas where you have open river systems like this, a thing to think about is when you have a bend in that river, a lot of times you get that current sweeping around and a lot of times it will make that outer bend a little bit deeper. But if you look at areas between two bends where it's a little bit straighter and maybe the river widens out a little bit, oftentimes that might be areas where you have a little bit shallower water. So you can see in this example right here that I have on the screen, you have a river bend up here and there's a couple more bends up above to the north. And you have this spot right here where that river widens out a little bit and where it widens out, you can see rocks in the aerial photo right here. So you know for sure that that's a shallower spot in the river. And that's a place that you could definitely go and check out and look for crossing. Uh, especially you got this point right here that drops down right at that location. So I would definitely check that place out as a potential river crossing area. And some of the areas up by me and further north where you got more of that big woods, flatter rolling hill type terrain and a lot of water. Sometimes you'll find that in areas where you have a lot of water, there'll be a lot of beavers, a lot of beaver dams. And those beaver dams can be areas where the deer movement really gets corralled, especially if the water on either side is fairly deep. And they're pretty easy to identify on a map. If you look at this spot right here, you can tell that there's these very distinct lines. So I would say this right here looks like a beaver dam. This right here looks like another one. Here you can see another area where you have a larger little pond or lake to the south here, and you have a marsh to the north. You have high ground, high ground, and so the shortest distance between these two areas is likely going to be where the deer movement would happen from one place of high ground to the other. Right here you can see also, this one's a little bit harder to see on the map, but this is confirmed on foot. You have a little bit of these wider, shallower looking bodies of water here to the south. And then right this line right here is the beaver dam, at least the last one in a series of small ones. And if you zoom in closer, you can see that it is browner. There's sticks and things like that. That's where that actual dam is. And there's a little bit of you know water spilling over the top of it. But to the north there, then you get those narrower little strips of water where that water has trickled over and just is a smaller stream. And in this particular area, number one, you got that beaver dam location. And number two, you got high ground on either side of it. And I have confirmed that this area is a place where deer will go and cross that little body of water. And then lastly, I'll cover some of these man-made pinch points and funnels. So some of these are going to be similar, or at least in some part naturally created, but oftentimes you'll find ones that are just strictly man-made. Uh, so an example that would be really easy to point out would be fence rows and ditches and things like that in farm country, where it's they're going to be acted upon similarly as some of those natural creek drainages out in some of the plain states. But you might have in farm country an area where you have one big wood lot and then another one and they're only connected by basically a little thin strip of cover here along where that fence goes. And at the locations where those particular areas meet, we have a you know, ditch right here and a small fence row right here, these convergences here would be places to look at as being pinch points. Here's another example where you've got a couple different little fence rows and it connects to this big wood lot here to the northeast. You got some more cover down here to the south. So this type of an area would make a good pinch point. And then larger man-made structures and roads can also act as funnels. The amount of traffic that a certain roadway gets can influence that. But as we know, a lot of deer get hit on the, the side of the highway every year. But typically, if you have a larger roadway with barriers and things like that, it's going to create more of a diversion than a little dirt road out in the country that only gets one car driving by every 15 minutes. I'll show an example here that I found where you have an area that's in between like a little flume and kind of a, a power plant type building. And this is combined with the fact that right in this edge here, you have a natural uh, steep wall. It's a little bit 
on a smaller scale than what would show up on the topo map, but there's actually a little bit of a vertical bluff right there. And so you get deer movement that gets choked between that little piece of vertical terrain right there and that flume on the top side. And this area right here in the middle becomes a great pinch point for both deer travel above and below that area. They're a little bit tougher to find, but when you do find them, they can be some of the more obvious and effective pinch points out there. You would just need to make sure that in scenarios like that, you're following whatever kind of laws there are in terms of being X number of feet away from structures. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. For me, I look at pinch points mostly when I'm hunting during the rut and or if I am hunting in relation to bedding, but I think there's a good pinch point between where the deer are bedding and where I think they're feeding. Then I'll key in on them as well. There are some that I kind of look at more than others, but again, it really depends on the, the type of habitat, which is why I wanted to try and give a, a good idea of the various types of terrains or habitats that you might find and some of the better pinch points in those types of areas. Sometimes you can get a really good idea just by looking on a map, especially out in that plains type habitat. But a lot of times also, it's good to just get a general idea on the map first and then verify with boots on the ground, especially if you're in an area that is very wooded. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and thanks for watching.